All right. Nyad is a new Netflix film based on the novel Find a Way by Diana Nyad herself, essentially chronicling this lifelong journey to eventually swim from Cuba to Florida. This film is directed by the wife and husband duo uh, Elizabeth Chai Vazarelli and Jimmy Chin, who are most well known for their work on Free Solo, which won an Academy Award. This film stars the wonderful, the amazing Annette Benning as Diana Nyad and Jodie Foster as her best friend Bonnie Stoll. Rightfully so, a lot of the talk has centered on the performances of these two women, which we'll get to a little bit later. This film was interesting in the sense that sometimes I felt completely invested and completely in the movie, but some other times I was taken out. I was pretty optimistic from the kind of opening shot where we see Annette Benning, and then uh, we have footage interspersed from the real Diana Nyad, which right from the get-go kind of set the stakes for the viewer, and I was in it. Unfortunately, though, I wouldn't say that this was the feeling that I held for the entire film. It was enjoyable. It was a fairly easy, straightforward watch. Uh, in some ways, oddly enough, it reminded me a little bit of my experience watching Coda, which I found to be a perfectly fine film with some strong performances, but I didn't really see it uh, setting itself above others. But then again, what do I know? It went on to win the Academy Award for Best Picture. So Nyad gave me a similar kind of uh, positive emotional feeling on this journey. But at times it felt a little bit hallmark to me. Some of the emotional beats were very predictable and a little bit formulaic, but hey, that formula does work. The film had some of its stronger moments when we cut back and forth between that archival footage of the quote-unquote real Diana Nyad and Nyad being played by Annette Benning. By going back and forth with the um, film version and the archival version of Nyad, it serves as a reminder to the audience of the real life and real stakes that were involved for Nyad herself. This is not just a made-up story about an older woman trying to fulfill her dreams. This is the real story of Diana Nyad, and when we're brought back to that place uh, where we remember that and we understand the importance of it, um, the film is a little bit elevated. Beyond the archival footage though, and this might sound strange to say because this film is essentially about a swim across the Atlantic Ocean, but the film is strongest when it's not about the swim. The film has some extremely powerful moments of reflection and of exploration of trauma. When we learn a little bit more about Nyad's childhood, Nyad's experience with different men in her life growing up, we understand that, yes, on the surface, all she's ever wanted is to complete this swim from Cuba to Florida. But what the film does well at times is allow us to see that it's not about the swim at all. It's about overcoming trauma or attempting to in our own unique way. And it's an acknowledgement that trauma is lifelong. 
Nyad has become who she is because of the experiences that she had to go through when she was younger. This unyielding desire to swim to cross the Atlantic Ocean is a testament to her will and her strength, but it's also a symptom of that early trauma. The idea that she isn't good enough, that she needs to prove to herself, and perhaps more importantly, she needs to prove to these men in the world that she is enough. Now, the film only tiptoes into that territory. And for me personally, I would have appreciated if it spent a little bit more time there. But I understand that that's also limiting to a certain audience. We don't all want to spend two hours exploring our inner self and recognizing trauma. Sometimes we want to focus on the uplifting nature of a story. And this is essentially what the film does for the most part. Before I move on to the next talking point here, there is one quote from Nyad in this film that I think exemplifies this part of her, this exploration of trauma. She is quoted as saying, the person who succeeds is the person who is willing to endure the most pain. And a lot of the decisions that the character makes in this film and that Diana and I had made in real life were ultimately inflicting pain upon herself. And we could enter into a large uh, discussion of uh, psychoanalytics, um, but we won't. What we can see though clearly is that Nyad was willing or perhaps felt like she had to go through hell to make it on the other side. So let's talk about some of the technical aspects of the film, which I have mixed feelings about. When it comes down to the editing, both visually and um, the sound, it was effective certainly in carrying viewers on an emotional journey. There were many abrupt cuts between the present, the past, uh, and archival footage, which was effective in bringing viewers where the directors wanted them to go. At times though, it felt a little bit contrived and almost as if emotions were being forced onto the audience. When we have a quick cut, the color grading changes and we're in a world of blue and we have these low key piano chords playing in the background, we understand, oh, I'm supposed to be sad now. I would have appreciated perhaps a little bit more subtlety at times. But again, I think for most people, it's probably effective in what it's trying to do. We are brought through the ups and downs that Nyad and Ani Stoll are experiencing. In my opinion, sometimes the visuals, again, are a little bit too much. There are some attempts at surrealism here, which to me come off as a little bit cheesy, um, but I could be in the minority there. A strength, however, I would say is the sound design, particularly when we are in the ocean with Nyad. As she goes under the water, above the water, as she swims, as she almost drowns, as she's confronted with different sea creatures, as an audience member, as a viewer, we feel like we're in the ocean with her. Um, and certainly the sound design is central to us being in that moment with Nyad. All right, so the part of this film that is being talked about the most uh, would be the performances of the pretty legendary Annette Benning and Jodie Foster. Their relationship in this film is based off of the real life relationship between 
Diana Nyad and her best friend, Bonnie Stoll. And the back and forth, the banter, the connection that these two characters have on screen is, is, is pretty hilarious. They incorporate mostly dry, um, deprecating humor directed at one another. And we buy into it, right? This connection between the two characters does feel real. I think it's safe to say that Jodie Foster is back. She kind of disappeared or at least wasn't at the forefront of our minds as film lovers for a period of almost 20 years or more. Uh, she did come back in 2021 with the Mauritanian winning um, Best Supporting Actress for her role there. And two years later, she is back with another performance that could garner her uh, a nomination at the Academy Awards. She was playing a character with a very tough exterior, but still was able to portray her emotional depth. And obviously that can be difficult when you are playing someone who on the surface is not letting people in. But she was so funny, so sarcastic, so dry, and through that humor, you could really see the depths of her affection for Nyad. And something else that I appreciated about how these characters were portrayed on screen is that their sexuality was a part of the film. Both Nyad and Bonnie Stoll are gay women, but it wasn't forced as the only kind of part of their character. It was simply an aspect of their being and it was acknowledged and there was so much room left to build them out as human beings. Unfortunately, in Hollywood, it's still pretty rare for a film to acknowledge a character's sexuality while also not making it all that that character is. So I do applaud uh, the directors here for doing a good job of showing real women, but still providing depth to these characters. Obviously, Annette Benning's performance is getting a lot of attention here. It's probably her best since her performance in 2010's The Kids Are All Right. I personally think that Jodie Foster's performance is potentially even stronger than Annette Benning's, but uh, she does a great job. When you look at the real archival footage of Nyad, it's clear that Annette Benning did her homework and that she captured her quite accurately. At the end of the day, this is a solid film. I would be surprised if the majority of people watching this did not enjoy it. For me, it was a little bit too hallmark at times, and I would have loved a little bit of a deeper exploration to the darker side of Nyad's journey. Still, I would say that it's worth a watch, and particularly when it comes to Netflix, would be one of the better films on the platform. So, a reason to watch the film, I would say the performances of two legendary actresses, Annette Benning and Jodie Foster, and a reason maybe not to watch the film. Yes, the story of Nyad is unique, certainly, but the film follows pretty standard emotional beats and you kind of know what to expect on the journey. Ultimately, I would give Nyad three out of five stars uh, and I check it out on Netflix. If you're still here, you know, you can do the subscribe thing, the like thing, the comment thing, I don't know.